Hello, welcome to Everyday Linux User. It's Saturday morning, it's almost 11 o'clock in the morning, which means only one thing. It's time for another video. And in today's video, I am going to go through a whole bunch of Linux distributions and I am going to order them in a list of easy to use down to the hardest to use. And so my plan is, I'm gonna name a distribution, I'm gonna say, is it easier or harder to use than the preceding one? And I'm gonna come up with a chart. Now, based on some of my videos in December, I'm thinking that I uh, didn't get a Christmas card from the Open Seuss gang, so I can imagine my Valentine's Day card will also be lost in the post. Now, I can feel the heat rising in the comments section before I even start this video, but remember all this is just personal opinion and it's based on my own experience of distributions that I've used. Now, when I come up with this list, I'm only going to list distributions that I've actually used during my life. I'm not going to comment on ones that I haven't, um, but I'm going to put them in the order of easiest to use down to the hardest to use. And so to do this, we are going to use this Libre Office document here. So let's start. The first one is obviously Linux Mint. It's the first one we've chosen, so it's got to go into number one. And the next one is MX Linux. Now, I think MX Linux slightly behind uh, Linux Mint on the ease of use chart on the basis that just the look and feel, I think Mint has a more common look and feel to it and more obvious to most uh, computer users than MX Linux. There's not much in it. MX Linux has a great set of tools. So I'm just gonna put that number two at the moment. Next, we've got Endeavor OS. Now Endeavor OS is Arch based and it's fairly close to the Arch architecture and sense of the way you install it and stuff. The installer is easy to use, but you will need to use the terminal at some point and you need to get used to using the terminal. It's not always straightforward. Sometimes things need a little bit of working out. So that's clearly behind Mint and MX Linux. Next we have Debian. Now Debian can be as easy or as difficult as you want it to be. Um, it's certainly not easier than Mint. It's not easier than MX Linux. Um, so we're gonna put it behind MX Linux and above Endeavor. You can install the live images and then you get a fairly generic desktop and it works and um, you'll get up and running quite quickly, but you can also go the other end of the scale, have a more minimal installation and then build it up as you want, which makes it more technical. So uh, I feel it falls there on the list. Next on the list is Cache OS. Now, it, again, it's an Arch-based distro. I actually think Endeavor tops it at this moment in time in terms of ease of use. It's got a few more tools like for installing applications, etc. I, I just feel that it's more mature in Cache. Therefore, it's currently, for me, easier to use in Cache. So I'm gonna put Cache OS as number five. Uh, Pop OS, um, Pop OS, I think is one of the easier distributions to use now. Uh, it's not easier to use than Mint. Is it easier to use than MX Linux? I'm gonna say yes it is. Uh, it's not much in it, um, but I think it's again got uh, a more common interface. It's actually easier to install stuff. Hasn't quite got the tool in of MX Linux, but I think it probably tops it in terms of ease of use. Manjaro, uh, now Manjaro is an Arch-based distro, but it is easy to install and easy to use. I don't think it is uh, easier than Mint Pop or MX, but I do think it's probably easier to use than Debian. As long as you don't go too deep into it and you want to do uh, too much technical stuff, it's easy to use because it has, again, a really good set of tools to go with it. Now, this isn't a which is best, which is worst distribution. This is which is easiest to use compared to which is hardest to use. Uh, Ubuntu, uh, then, well, where does that go? I think it's easier to use than Manjaro and probably easier to use than MX. So we're gonna pop it under pop. Fedora OS. Uh, so Fedora, the, the thing that mainly lets Fedora down is the installer. Uh, so it's certainly not uh, easier than Mint Pop, Ubuntu, MX. And uh, now here we go, we've got Manjaro. Is it easier to install a Manjaro? Easier to use? No, it's not. Is it easier to use and install the Debian? Uh, that is arguable. And the thing with Fedora is that you could split it really. You could split it between the atomic distributions and the 
um, main fedora distribution because the main fedora is probably slightly harder to use than the atomic ones but I'm going to put it I think just under Debian but they could be alongside each other to be honest with you open source now um, I've got into hot water with the open source brigade um, with my reasons it's not suitable for new users and that was based on the tumbleweed not the leap version of open source Having said that, I do think that it's harder to use than Debian and Fedora. And I'm going to say it's, it's more difficult than Endeavor. Um, because Endeavor, whilst it's arch based and you have to do a lot more stuff in the terminal, it's clear and obvious. So I'm going to put it perhaps between Endeavor and Kashi. Uh, next we've got Zorin. Uh, Zorin's one of the easiest to use, so it needs to go up here. I think it probably goes number three on the list behind pop and mint uh, nabara now nabara is for nabara does to fedora what mint does to ubuntu and debian it takes a base distribution and makes it easier to use for the average joe so i'm going to take nabara uh, it's, it's probably not top three uh, ubuntu is probably easy to use and i'm going to say mx and manjaro are probably easy to use but it's going to go in at the number seven spot there Elementary. Now, elementary on the surface is easy to install, um, but the tooling in it isn't very good at all. And if you watch my previous video, it's fairly buggy and you, you've got a bit of work to do with it. But this isn't uh, which is best, this is which is easier to use. So, in theory, if you can install software from the software center, then it should be easier than Debian. But it's not my favorite distribution by any means. KDE Neon is one of the best KDE based distributions around and it's designed to be easy to use. I think it probably um, goes just below Manjaro there. Anti-X. Anti-X is like a even more lightweight version of MX Linux. Uh, I think we can put that probably at number nine uh, because I, I'd imagine the bar and those really if you've got the means use MX Linux over anti-x but if you've got a light uh, an older PC then anti-x is what you're going to go for tuxedo Linux now tuxedo is one I tried last year and it was a breath of fresh air it is actually really easy to install and easy to use so I'm going to actually slip that in at number six NixOS, I haven't tried vanilla. Uh, so vanilla is a an immutable distribution and it's got this great thing where you can install applications from different distributions quite easily. So it is actually really easy to set up and easy to use. So I'm gonna actually put it here at number 10. Kali, um, it's not designed to be easy to use. It's actually easy to install, but the tools that come with it it's not really um, made for your average Joe, so I'm going to slip that right at the bottom. FreeBSD is Linux, I've never tried it. Alma Linux. So Alma Linux is a Fedora based distribution, Red Hat based distribution. It's certainly no easier to use than Fedora. Uh, you could slip it in between here and here. I'm actually going to say it's probably here. There are better examples of Fedora-based distributions than Alma, um, so I'd say for easy use, it's probably down there somewhere. Spark Linux is a Debian-based distribution. It definitely goes for the um, quantity over quality in terms of the applications come with it. It just throws applications at you. Having said that, it is easy to install and easy to use. Where does it fit? I think probably uh, I'm gonna say here purely because it's not a mainstream distribution it's probably not you're not gonna find it easy as easy to find solutions to your problems and there are gonna be little quirks here and there because it isn't as big as some of the other distributions easy OS is a puppy based distribution now puppy isn't the easiest uh, distribution to use in the world it's um, probably, 
is it harder to use an, an arch based distribution the, the tooling can be quite tricky um, especially certain things like wi-fi and stuff like that but once you've got it set up it, it's okay so we are talking down here somewhere so i'm actually going to put it here gruda linux is uh gruda linux is an arch based distro now if we're talking about arch based distros is it easier to use than manjaro no it's not is it easier to use than elementary yes probably is so based on that it's got to go in here Linux Lite, uh, Debian based, lightweight, um, easy to install. It comes with a Synaptic package manager. It's not quite as easy to install as some of the more common packages. It's lightweight, so it's designed to run on older machines. So based on that, it can't be um, easier than any of these because these make it easy to install software. I'd, I'd probably say though, it could fall in here somewhere. Blue Star never used deep in Solus. Uh, I have used Solus in the past. It's been a while since I used Solus. Uh, the thing I found with Solus is it doesn't have that many applications in its repositories. It's actually quite easy to install and easy to use, but because of the lack of applications, it, it kind of falls down the list. And I'm gonna say it's probably about here. Alpine and CentOS. Uh, now CentOS um, is it still actually available as a distribution. Uh, I'm not going to list it because I haven't used it in quite a long time, so it's hard for me to say. Uh, Kubuntu is Ubuntu with the KDE desktop. It's easy to use, easy to install. Uh, let's compare it to KDE Neon because I think that's where where it sits in the scheme of things. Now, is KDE on Neon easier to use or harder to use than Kubuntu? This is a toss of a coin situation. I'm actually going to put KDE Neon slightly easier but Kubuntu slots in there at number nine uh, Tails I uh, haven't tried that one Q4 OS is a lightweight very lightweight Linux distribution easy to install and easy to use and actually it's very easy to install and easy to use now where it might fall down is um, is there enough support for the applications going forward for it but actually it's it's really easy to use now it could feasibly slot anywhere in the top 10 here I'm gonna put it slightly above Linux Lite purely because of the desktop environment the Trinity desktop isn't for everyone but I, th uh, I think there's also another desktop you can use for Q4S it is re really customizable and it's easy to use so um, if you've got an older machine definitely Q4OS Puppy Linux I mentioned that earlier when I chose EasyOS um, I'm going to put it here slightly above that Whilst it's, it, it is quite technical in nature in terms of once you've got it on the USB and you boot from the USB, there are things with the save files and stuff like that that you have to deal with and setting up the internet isn't always easy. Some of the tools are quite tricky and lightweight and they're bundled, like you've got three or four um, applications to connect to the internet and you kind of, it's a trial and error basis as to which one might work. So that's why I've put that so far down the list. PC Linux OS should be an easy to use distribution. It's not as easy to use as it used to be. It's looking quite old. Having said that, I think it probably sits around here. Openman for even never used Calculate Voyager Slackware. Uh, I, whilst I know Slackware would probably be down here somewhere, um, I've never used it. Uh, so I can't really say. Arco Power, um, haven't used. Lubuntu is Ubuntu with a LXQT desktop environment, really easy to use. Uh, so we're probably talking, is LXQT easy to use in KDE? Probably not. So I'm gonna probably say just under, well now we're comparing, is Ubuntu easy to use and Q4 OS? I'm gonna say yes it is. Devuan is Debian, um, but it doesn't have the system D and stuff like that. Really, it's got to go where Debian is. Ghost BSD Ultimate I haven't used. 4M Linux I have used. It doesn't really work very well. Uh, it's going to be hard to use because it doesn't work very well. So I'm going to put it down here. 
Megaya. Uh, so, Megaya is an independent distribution uh, based on the Mandrivas and the Mandrakes of the past. Uh, I've always found it a little bit buggy and tricky to set up. I think it probably just slips under OpenSUSE. They're very similar in nature, in fact, in terms of the quirks that come with them. So that's why I put that so far down. Rocky I haven't used, Porteous haven't used, Chaos. I think I have used in the past, but I can't quite remember it, so I'm not going to judge. Peppermint OS, lightweight distribution based on Debian. Again, it's probably up here with the Lubuntu's Linux lights and stuff. Uh, so, is it easy to use a Linux Lite? Probably Q4 OS. I'm going to put it at number 12. Damn small Linux, never tried. Red Hat, I've never really tried. Zubuntu is Ubuntu with the XFCE desktop environment. It's got to go here, really. As much as I like the XFCE desktop environment, I'd say MX Linux has the best implementation of the XFCE desktop environment and Subuntu therefore goes with Lubuntu. Marina never used Archcraft. Endless, I have tried. It wasn't particularly successful. I'm going to put that down here. Probably should be easier to use, but again, I, I didn't find it a great experience. Haiku, Regatta, Makulu. Makulu I haven't used in a long time, I've got to admit. Um, so I'm not going to put it on the list. Body I haven't used in a long time, so I'm not going to put that on the list. Gen 2 really would be at the bottom here, off the list. Um, definitely hard to use. I'm really, really going down the list now. Uh, so I'm going to probably end soon, uh, but we'll, we'll keep going for a little bit. Alt, Nitrix, S-Desk. So we've got Arch. Now, I have used Arch before. Now, it has to be said, Arch, whilst it's got an automated installer, it sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Um, the manual install is quite technical in nature. For that reason, it's got to go down here. It's If you want an Arch-based distro, you're probably looking at Endeavor, uh, but if you want a really easy to install one, then Manjaro, even though the Arch users will, will be frowned upon that as a suggestion. But Manjaro is easy to install and easy to use, regardless of its base. Uh, Linux FX, React OS, and Ubuntu, Cubes, Gnopix, Pure OS, Proxmox, Rhino, What OS. I did try what OS last year, can't really remember it. I think we're probably getting towards the end. I'll see if I can find any more that makes sense to go on here. Ubuntu Mate, uh, I love the Mate desktop environment. Um, I think it probably comes around here. Like that. And I think that's where we'll end. Well, we've got 37. It'd be nice to make it up to 40. But to make sure this is a genuine guide, we're going to leave it at 37. So that's the end of my list. What do you think? Now, I, I bet if I did this in a month's time, my list would be different uh, and in a slightly different order. But I think, by and large, this is the order I would say the Linux distributions are in terms of ease of use. Now I can feel your fingers hitting the keyboard. Some of you will have smoke coming out the keyboard and you probably need a new keyboard by the time you finish entering your comments into the comment section. Remember, this is just personal opinion, uh, but hopefully this will help new users out there. When you're looking, which distribution should I use if I'm a new user? Really, you're talking anywhere, probably down to, probably down to Linux Lite is your starting point. Uh, and probably top 10 really for really easy to use so that's the end of the video if you like it give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and i'll see you next time on everyday linux user